So uh, welcome to our talk, um, Advertisements on Social Networking Sites as Recruitment Tool for Online Surveys. Uh, this talk is given by me, Steffen Pötschke, and my colleague Christoph Beutner. Let me just show you uh, what we have planned for you today. So um, I will give a sh we will start with a short introduction to the method, then tell you uh, what to consider when plan planning your ad campaign, when implementing it, and we will close with some examples. So um, let's get right to it. Uh, first of all, uh, we want to clarify what this talk is about and more importantly, what it's not about. Because it's relatively clear from the title, I think, uh, that we will focus on advertisements uh, on social networking sites, specifically on Facebook and uh, Instagram. And they are used to recruit survey respondents. So what the talk no is not about is, um, for example, web scrapping or uh, the uh, method to invite people to participate in surveys through posts in Facebook groups or something like this. So we are really focusing on targeting targeted advertisements and how they can be used uh, to recruit survey participants. One of the first questions you might certainly ask is why would we actually think about using Facebook and Instagram for survey sampling? Um, so one of the main reasons is that uh, this is a really large um, sampling frame, meaning uh, Facebook and Instagram, the whole Facebook uh, family in, in fact, has 3.3 billion monthly active users uh, globally which allows us to, to cover with our surveys a large area of the world, not all countries, but most of them. But at the same time, we can do very geographically fine-grained targeting. In fact, um, we could target people uh, using a radius of three miles as the minimum uh, area. So uh, the Facebook Advertisements Manager allows us to use a multitude of targeting variables, which uh, some of them we have listed on this slide. I'm not going to read them out. A very important argument for using social networking sites for sampling purposes in general is that they allow us to reach otherwise hard to reach populations. So for example, members of specific small social subgroups like workers in cer certain industries. We can reach scattered populations, very mobile individuals, meaning, for example, migrants, or individuals whom we could not reach using other sampling frames. Furthermore, the method is easy and fast to realize. It is open to all scholars, uh, meaning that we do not need to uh, cooperate with Facebook as such, as we use Facebook's business model. And not last but not least, this is uh, also important, especially for smaller projects or projects with smaller budgets, to be more precise. Uh, this sampling method is much less expensive than most established me methods. But of course, there are limitations. Those limitations uh, mostly are in the area of coverage. So obviously, we can only uh, reach internet users and more precisely only those internet users you, who actually actively use Facebook and Instagram. We have to consider that there are possible effects of the of different digital divides. Um, the targeting in part depends on information that uh, our target population enters in their Facebook profiles, meaning that we might actually not reach the whole target population, there might be some members of the target population who have not entered the necessary information and cannot be targeted by our advertisements. The question as to how Facebook and Instagram actually compute targeting variables is a black box. That's also a limitation in this regard. So we do not really know what goes into those variables. And of course, we have a possible self-selection biases to consider. With this slide, we just want to show you that uh, we are certainly not the first ones who use this approach. There's by now a broad range of other studies that has used it, which you can have a look at um, after the talk, I guess. So with this, we are coming to 
the next point, namely how to plan your ad campaign, what to consider. And here we want to start you off by reminding ourselves and you that survey design in general is more than just questionnaire design. In our case, using so social networking sites, there are three main com components that we have to think about when designing our survey. So uh, a first component is the project's Facebook page. Then we have obviously the advertisements and equally obvious, we have our online survey, which is externally hosted and not within the Facebook environment. For designing this, um, we recommend to follow Don Dillman's tailored design method. And this means, among other things, that we use, should use similar design elements across uh, all of the above mentioned components. We should try to take the respondents point of view when designing them. And we should keep uh, the stimuli of our ad as consistent across devices as possible. We can, in our analysis, uh, control for design effects if we use URL parameters, and we will get to this at a later point of the presentation, what this actually means. So um, what are those three components exactly what it, that I just mentioned? Um, first of all, we have the Facebook page. Here you have to consider that every advertisement that you, um, that you start through the Facebook Advertisement Manager, and at this point I should uh, mention that the Facebook Advertisement Manager is also used to uh, commission advertisements on Instagram, so it's the same software that you use, the same interface. And each advertisement that you want to start has to be connected to a Facebook page. We recommend to set up a Facebook page which is survey specific for your project because this has um, a whole bunch of advantages. Here, for example, you see a survey, a Facebook page of a recent survey we did which targeted uh, German immigrants. And as you can see, we can here provide a number of informations. You see, for example, a small map which uh, shows where our institute is located at. We have uh, contact information on this Facebook page and we also have a description, which you cannot see in the screenshot, of the survey itself. And the latter is rather important because um, keep in mind that the most of the respondents or most of the Facebook users at this point who see your advertisements will have really uh, a small amount of information on your survey at this point, because they see only this, which are the advertisements. And here you can see the text is not uh, really uh, very long. So from the advertisements themselves, people will not get too many information. But what you see also on this screen is that we use, and this follows Don Dillman, similar design elements in the Facebook page and in the uh, in the advertisement, setting up a specific Facebook page for your project also means that the title of your Facebook page, which should be the title of your survey, will be on top of the advertisement next to the uh, profile picture you choose, which in our case is the logo of our institute. If for some reason you would have to use, for example, the Facebook page, official, official Facebook page of your institute, the title of your survey would just be under the media element, which would not be uh, ideal. And the third element that we have to take into consideration is of course the uh, survey landing page. Again, here we will have information about our survey. So uh, coming to the advertisements themselves, uh, again we are following Don Dillman in the sense that your advertisement should really speak to your target population. Obviously it should catch their attention, but it should also um, activate them, motivate them to participate in the survey. So the first thing is obviously the title of your survey itself, but the next important part is the advertisement text. And as you can see, again, the text is really short. So um, be as specific as you can and try to motivate your target population to participate in your survey. Under the 
text itself, you have uh, the media element. Um, keep in mind, Facebook and Instagram are very visual media. Usually, in our research, we use uh, we use, photo use photographs and we use different photographs um, to target diff different strata of our target population because people might react differently to different pictures. But you can also use um, videos by now. And under the uh, media element, you again have a couple of signs space to uh, include a message for your target population. When designing your advertisements, you really need to think ahead because all advertisements have to be reviewed by Facebook nowadays. This means um, that you really should allow for enough time. Usually it takes about 24 hours. Obviously, you should check out beforehand the advertisement policies and community standards so that both your pictures and your advertisement text um, comply to these standards. And be aware that in some cases there are specific regulations such as for COVID-19. Advertisement campaigns on Facebook and Instagram are strict structured in three layers. So we have the campaign itself. Within the campaign we have one or more ad sets and within each ad set we have one or more um, ad. Ad sets are really important as they allow you to um, target specific strata of your target population, which I come to now. So most of the things which are important for your project, for your targeting, you will actually define on the ad set level. So targeting variables, fielding time, pricing, etc. all this you do on the targeting level. Um, and it is important not to forget that Facebook does not know which variables are important for you, which targeting variables, unless you spec specify it. This means uh, the Facebook AI will start to increasingly show during the lifetime of your campaign advertisements that are successful, meaning, for example, that they are most clicked upon. And it will not automatically stratify your sample by age, for example. So if it is important for your research to reach, uh, to, to have some diversity in terms of age, you need to use different ad sets for different age cohorts. And again, you should include URL parameters in your advertisement so that later on you know in your data set which advertisement, which ad set uh, users on Facebook actually came from and uh, those who then turn into participants, into observations in your data set. So at the same time, you have to keep in mind that with each ad set, obviously your um, campaign design gets more complex and also it can become or it will become uh, more expensive as you need a minimum budget for targeting. In a nutshell, the rec recommendation here is use as many ad sets as necessary, but as few as possible. And then, of course, there is the question for the costs. So what does it cost to use this? Um, unfortunately, there is no uh, short answer to this. So uh, Facebook and, and uh, Instagram use two billing modes, cost per click and cost per impression in general. But there are no fixed price rates. Instead, uh, there is in the background an automated action process going on. And this means also that beforehand, for example, if you write a grant proposal, you will not be able to get an exact estimate of the uh, recruitment costs that will occur. The only thing you can do is to go to the literature and check for costs of uh, comparable uh, target populations. Uh, luckily, by now, there are a number of um, different publications and I we put some of them here on this slide just to show you the range of prices. Um, so again the recommendation go to the literature check it out and uh, plan your budget with a comfortable margin um, upwards so that you will not run to, into any problems. And with that we come to the question as to how you actually implement your campaign. First of all, some uh, practical hints for starters. 
if you want to use advertisements on Facebook and Instagram, you need an ad account, which is free. You should use an institutional ad account, which means that several people can collaborate on your uh, advertisement campaign. But it's also important to know that the use of new ad accounts, meaning if you did not buy advertisements from Facebook before, um, is a bit tricky because in the beginning, uh, Facebook allows you only to use the cost per impression option. In the Facebook Advertisement Manager, it says that once you have spent a certain budget, um, as, I as we last checked, this was eight euro, the uh, cost per click option would, be, would become available. The problem is um, when we last used a new budget, uh, a new ad account ourselves last year, we actually did a pretest to allow for spending those eight euro and the option did not become available immediately. This means A, you should use, uh, you should do a pretest. Also, you, I mean, you should do it for a survey related reasons, but also for this management aspect, but you need to do it sometime before your actual, actual survey if you use a new ad account. And another point, uh, related to new ad accounts is that Facebook in the beginning they kind of mistrust you as a new user and they will charge you really small amounts of money. So if your advertisement goes well on the first day already it can be that your credit card or your mode of payment will get charged 10-15 times with amounts uh, starting at 5 euro going up to 50. So talk to your administration beforehand and if need be even uh, get in touch with your bank to alert them that they so that they do not block your mode of payment. Okay, so now uh, how do you go about uh, actually commissioning the advertisements? You do this uh, by the use of the Facebook um, advertisement manager. I have mentioned that before. If you enter, this is the screen that you will see. Here, the first thing is that you obviously click on create a new campaign and then you decide on a target of your campaign. So what should happen once people see your advertisement? For survey researchers, this will mostly be the option traffic, meaning that people will be guided to your external page, which is usually the, the landing page of your survey. Um, once you are in your campaign, the next level is you start to edit your ad sets. And as I said, here on this level, you will define most of the parameters of your campaign. And importantly, once you start doing this, once you start defining different targeting parameters, Facebook will calculate your target population. So this number, which you see on the right here, will start to change according to your um, adjustments. We already mentioned in the, on the ad set level, you will choose the targeting criteria, mo the most important ones we have on this slide. So you can say how people should relate to certain um, locations. You can define age ranges, gender and interests. And you also have to decide uh, on the placements of your advertisements. So first of all, you have to choose the devices they should be shown on, then the platforms, meaning Facebook and Instagram, and uh, where within those platforms the uh, advertisement should appear. Once you have done this, you will go to the editing of the advertisement itself. You have to choose the media element that is clear. You have to define the text elements. And this is now the point at which I get into me more detail regarding, regarding the URL parameters, which I have mentioned several times now. So for each advertisement, you can uh, define URL parameters, which provided your survey software allows for that, uh, will be registered with each observation in your data set. And this means the following. In our research, uh, we used, for example, here a different, uh, a number of different URL parameters, um, which identified different, st different things. So first of all, we have static URL parameters. In our case, um, A identifies a campaign, B a region, C, a gender cohort, uh, D, an age cohort that was targeted by this specific ad set, E, the image that was used in the advertisement 
the participant clicked upon. And then we have dynamic URL parameters, meaning those will be filled by Facebook. And these uh, tell us in this cage, case uh, which uh, Facebook platform, Facebook Inc. platform people came from. So meaning did they see the advertisement on Instagram or on Facebook? And G gives us the exact placement, meaning where on Facebook, in which Facebook element actually was the advertisement displayed. So obviously you have to go through all of this and there are more parameters. This was just a quick overview. Once you have done this for one advertisement, you can copy the advertisement as often as you need within your ad set. Then you can copy and adjust the ad set as often as you need it for your campaign. And if you use more than one campaign, you can then copy even the com campaign and adjust it as well. Once you are done with all of this, you hit the publish button. And this is where the review process starts. So again, just a gentle reminder, um, you should allow for at least 24 hours between publishing, starting re the review process and your intended start of the survey. Once your advertisement campaign and your survey obviously are online, you should constantly monitor the progress of the campaign and adjust the settings as needed. And then this slide is just to point out that until now there are not that many defined standards for survey researchers, what we should uh, document, what we should report when using this method. So better safe than sorry, document as much as you can. And on this slide, we also give some recommendation what from our point of view, you should at least include in your, press, uh, in your publications when you used this sampling method. And with this, we come now to our examples and I hand over to my colleague, Christoph. Thank you, Stefan. Um, I will start talking about a study we did um, surveying German health professionals. So why did we uh, decide to use Facebook and Instagram? So um, health workers are at the front line of the COVID-19 pandemic and uh, due to their job, they of course have a really uh, increased risk of exposure to the coronavirus. Um, the World Health Organization reported up to 115,000 deaths of health workers globally due to the coronavirus. And um, of course, that leads to a high stress level and mostly health professionals are already subject to a high stress level due to their responsibilities, their long working hours um, their working conditions. So for researchers, um, the pandemic is a unique chance to investigate how the pandemic affects health professionals and their lives. <clears throat> so health uh, professionals are already a hard to reach population and given the pandemic situation in Germany, it was basically impossible to contact them uh, through their facilities or workplaces because it was impossible to enter hospitals. So um, we thought that maybe Facebook is a feasible way to contact them and to recruit them for our survey. And um, we did that as uh, Stefan already introduced by tailored advertisements. Um, in our study, we tested three ways of targeting. Um, one was that we just approached the general population with our ads. Um, then there is the option to specify an interest on Facebook. And one of these interests is conveniently healthcare. And another um, <clears throat> way was that we specified the affiliation and there we could also select healthcare. Okay, so um, a few facts on the study. So uh, it was a German online survey. Um, the questionnaire was uh, consisted out of several parts. Uh, there was one part where we asked the respondents uh, for their work experience during COVID-19, how their uh, experience changed. Um, then there was one part about vaccination and um, which uh, vaccines they would recommend to their fellows and um, their family and friends. And then um, a few demographic questions that are pretty standard in survey research. Uh, the median completion time was 15 minutes for the questionnaire. Yeah, uh, we were targeting only German health professionals um, and they were defined really widely. That means individuals that worked in the health industry, in hospitals that are doctors, nurses, all of those kind of people. 
Um, we target them exclusively uh, through Facebook and Instagram ads, but it was also possible to access the survey during our uh, Facebook page. But only 83 persons did so and um, that only led to three complete questionnaires, so that wasn't really successful. <clears throat> um, the questionnaire, the ads and the whole Facebook page were only in German, because we were only targeting uh, German health workers. Uh, we didn't give any incentives and uh, the field period was from 20th of April to the 3rd of, Mar of May. Uh, of this year and then we let the survey open a little bit longer until the 21st May of uh, 2021. So a few more words on the setup. Um, we were using five tailored advertisements. All of them were showing pictures um, that showed health professionals in various situations. And we were specifying a few more quotas. Um, gender, there is only the option to specify male or female. Then we split up the age range Facebook allows in two similar sized groups. And then we had another specification that was the region. Uh, for the background, Germany consists out of 16 uh, federal states and we created three groups out of them. Uh, the three smallest states by population size, the three largest states by population size and then the rest in the middle. <clears throat> Yeah, the ads were placed um, on Facebook and Instagram and we used on Facebook the feed, the stories and the right column and on Instagram the feed and the stories. And we allowed of course the inclusion of all devices so you could use mobile devices as well as normal computers, desktop computers. <clears throat> yeah, this is the participation. Uh, in total we showed over 600,000 ads. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, that led to 11,797 participations, but um, there were also 9,690 bots. And there's a variety of bots that visited our page, but the vast majority of those visits, um, I think way over 90%, uh, were done by the Facebook hit bot. That's uh, a bot used by Facebook to visit your site and to optimize how it is displayed on Facebook. And this bot visited our page over 300 times a day. So I, I don't really know why it's doing that, but it did it. And you can identify the bots by uh, the user agent string and eliminate them from the data set. <clears throat> so then um, 5,628 uh, of the 11,000 or 12,000 participants uh, answered the first question. And then um, a total of nearly 5,000 of them were health workers. So we had a really high percentage uh, that belong to our target population. Okay, the, this graph show the participation by platform and ad placement. And here you can see that most of our respondents were recruited through Facebook, but also a large proportion through Instagram. Interestingly, um, there are some respondents that came from the Facebook Messenger. We did not show ads in the Facebook Messenger, but uh, I believe this is because some people copied the link from an advertisement and then send it uh, using the Facebook Messenger to someone else and then Facebook is still filling in the URL parameter. But there are like only 20 or 30 uh, respondents that entered through the Facebook Messenger. And um, then on the right side there is the participation by ad placement uh, and there you can see the really prominent uh, is the Facebook mobile feed and the Instagram story and considering that Basically, all Instagram users or nearly all Instagram users use Instagram nearly exclusively on their uh, mobile device. That shows that uh, most of our participants were using a mobile device. Okay, here is the um, <clears throat> participation by campaign on uh, the left side for all participants and on the right side only for those who were really health workers. And you can see that the affiliation uh, campaign did not lead to a lot of participation by the general population and the interest campaign worked really well. Also, if you specify for health workers that um, are basically the same results. We even doubled the, the daily budget on the affiliation uh, program to in the, within the campaign, but uh, we didn't see any positive effect of that. So um, those were the ads we were, sh we were showing. Uh, Maybe on picture one, 
The woman is holding a flask showing COVID-19. Picture two is a stressed health worker. Then image three is more a symbolic picture. Image four showing um, a kid and image five an elder person. So we try to uh, always focus on pictures that show health workers in situations, but always um, with, with a little bit of a, uh, a different tone to it. And uh, we can see that image one and image two uh, were most successful, uh, especially image two showing the stressed health worker seems to really resonate with our respondents. And um, in the course of uh, our, our field phase, we saw that the algorithm was uh, limiting the displayment more and more to uh, image two. Um, and there's also some anecdotal evidence uh, we could find. Maybe that is because we had this really special topic. But image one showing the, the flask with the COVID-19 uh, label led to some really provocative comments. Um, they were mainly related to conspiracy theories surrounding COVID-19. We had uh, something, uh, you get paid for that by Bill Gates or the government, or um, you are already part of a scientific experiment and stuff like that. So uh, we did not think that it's really worth discussing that kind of stuff with anyone. So we were hiding them and we checked once a day and we were hiding all the comments that were <clears throat> related to conspiracy theories. Um, initially, we also wanted to show another image instead of image five where the elder man was shown. Um, the image where uh, was the one on the bottom where a health worker was vaccinating someone or injecting something to someone. Uh, vaccination is probably my interpretation, um, but Facebook banned that ad. Um, I'm not 100% sure why exactly, but I guess it is because it shows violence or um, yeah, surgery or something like that. And um, we gave that picture into review to Facebook, but they still rejected it. Okay, so what are the main takeaways from our study? <clears throat> so first of all, as you saw with the affiliation targeting that didn't work, using the correct target mechanisms uh, with a large enough reach is really important. Uh, the second takeaway is that you should optimize for mobile devices because for us, a lot of the respondents were using mobile devices and um, because they were especially recruited uh, through the Facebook mobile feed and the Instagram story. <clears throat> then uh, we saw that uh, the pictures that resonated the best with uh, our audience were those uh, related to the topic and having a high symbolic value. In our case, the stressed health worker. So um, probably many of the health workers could identify with that picture. And last but not least, sadly, you should think ahead of what you do when you are confronted with hate speech, trolls, offensive comments stuff like that because that very likely will happen as we saw in our topic <clears throat> yeah so um, that's it for me and now i will give over to stefan again i will uh, present in less detail a second example uh, which is based on a survey we did on uh, german immigrants on a nearly global level so um, again here really just, I'm not, I'm not going to read out all of that. Why would we use Facebook and Instagram? So migrants in general are in most cases hard to reach populations, even so, even more so emigrants, because uh, if you take a look, a point of view from the country of origin, meaning you want to uh, target them globally, you face a geographically very dispersed obviously population and most sampling frames do not cover all countries. This is problem one. Problem two, even national sampling frames um, that might exist in some countries do not exist in others. And usually as a researcher, you do not be know beforehand uh, the settlement patterns, patterns of emigrants. So you do not know which countries to target or which you can leave aus out because there are no emigrants of the uh, from the country you're interested in. Um, furthermore, there are no well-established uh, sampling methods for emigrants uh, that could be used in a high number of countries. There is, however, for example, an innovative approach using uh, population registers, also for German uh, emigrants in this case, because in German 
population registers, you do not just have to register when you change your residence within the country, but also when you leave the country. And in this case, you can even uh, register an address abroad. And I will come to that in a minute. And uh, one specific thing uh, that is obvious from the literature regarding German immigrants is that uh, the different sampling approach that approaches that have already been tested uh, work rather well for European countries, but uh, they do not cover really well um, non-European regions, especially uh, if you consider regions uh, like Africa or continents like Africa, South America, Middle America or, or certain parts of Asia. So um, also in this case, we did an online survey, obviously, um, we targeted German emigrants overseas, meaning individuals born in Germany and or holding German citizenship living in a non-European country. And we uh, used ad sets to diversify our sampling strategy. And most important in this regard is that we used uh, 13 ad sets that targeted different regions, meaning we first of all distinguished between the continents and then within the continents, uh, we again distinguish two to three regions. So uh, the hope being that this would allow us to really uh, get a certain, and a certain range of diversity in our sample in terms of geography. And um, we did this research uh, in August of last year, also a rather short uh, feeding period as with the survey Christoph just presented. Um, just really quick, some uh, bullet points on, on some figures, some important figures of this research. So um, in this case, we used only a very small budget in comparison at least of uh, slightly over 2,200 euro. And as you can see in the table, uh, we reached with that uh, already for nearly 4,000 people who completed our survey. And as in the other survey, you can also see here that the targeting mechanism actually worked very well as most of the respondents, namely 3,816, uh, were actually German emigrants by our definition that I stated before. And this means that this was also very cost efficient because if you consider our budget, it means that we paid about 58 euro cents per completed questionnaire. So how did, uh, how, what are our uh, resul results like regarding the um, geographical location of respondents. Again, we used the certain ad sets I mentioned before, and we were able with our small budget and within a time of less than a month to collect data from respondents in 148 countries and territories. And we even had some subsamples of 50 or more respondents in 18 countries and 10 or more res uh, respondents in 53 countries. In a number of countries, we reached uh, samples of more than 100 participants. And uh, this means for us that the approach was really successful in terms of geographic coverage. And then there's the other question. Um, could we have reached our participants with the most promising other uh, uh, strategy that is out there, which is uh, the population register-based sampling that I mentioned before. To ascertain this issue, um, we included several questions in our survey. And uh, here we are just showing information of 3,226 uh, 3, uh, participants who answered all necessary information, uh, all necessary questions to give us those information. And what you can see is that only 15% of those respondents deregistered their German address with uh, the German authorities, while at the same time providing a new address abroad and were also still living at this address. So those people could have been reached by sending a letter to these addresses inviting them to a survey, 15%. On the other hand, we see that 20% of our respondents did not deregister at all, so they wouldn't even be in the sampling frame. Then we have another 8% who deregistered, also provided an address, but are not living anymore at this address. And we have another 17% uh, who uh, deregistered 
without providing an address. So what are the takeaways from this study? Um, Facebook and Instagram allowed us recruiting a comparatively large sample considering our budget of German emigrants within a short time. Um, we were able to reach respondents on a global level with a certain amount or uh, uh, actually a, a high amount uh, of geographic diversity which was reached through the use of ad sets and uh, of those respondents in our data set from whom we have the necessary information, 50, only 15% could have been reached by a register-based sampling when, in cases when you would send uh, an invitation letter to their address and 45% uh, could not have been recruited through this approach. And with this we have basically reached the end of our talk. Um, on this slide we just want you to invite uh, to check out a number of publications we already uh, have out there and there will be more in the near future, most prominently a uh, GESIS survey guideline that should be out at some point during the next weeks.